What's up, spacers? This is your specialist, the space technician. And get ready. Hold on to your jetpacks, because we're blasting off to Saturn's strange alien moon, powered by radioactive helicopters. I'm not kidding. NASA's bonkers brilliant Dragonfly mission will soar through the soupy skies of Titan using actual nuclear-powered drone copters. This insane rotorcraft is set to start final assembly later this year for its launch in 2027. I know, three years seems like forever from now. But considering it takes nearly a decade for spacecraft to reach the stunning rings of Saturn, we better start getting pumped. Before we dive into why Titan needs a freaking robot drone army, take just a sec to mash all those YouTube buttons for me. Smash like, obliterate subscribe, and completely annihilate that notification bell so you don't miss out when things start getting out of this world. All right, flickering glow of smashed atoms, check. Cushy seatbelts, fastened. Sci-fi speculation goggles, secured tightly to face. We're ready to unwrap the mysteries of Saturn's crazy hydrocarbon jungle moon. What we discover floating in those alien skies may totally change how we search for extraterrestrial life. So why does Titan need a nuclear-powered drone copter invasion? Grab some snacks, because things are about to get intense. All right, let's dive into the details on Dragonfly. I wanted to start with a quick overview on why Titan is such an intriguing destination. Titan is a very unique moon. It's the only one in our solar system with a thick atmosphere. That nitrogen-rich atmosphere has a composition reminiscent of early Earth's. What's even more fascinating is that Titan has lakes, rivers, rain, and seas. But instead of water, it has hydrocarbons, like methane and ethane, flowing through its surface. It's this complex combination of organics interacting with liquid that makes Titan such a tantalizing place to study the chemistry that may have led to life starting on our own planet billions of years ago. The conditions allow for prebiotic chemistry, reactions between simple compounds that could have built up the backbone molecules of life over time. You see, here on Earth, we simply don't have an intact record of what organic reactions ultimately triggered the leap to biology. That evidence has long been erased or overwritten by the very life it produced. But on Titan, complex organic molecules are raining down from the atmosphere constantly, likely accumulating in the lakes and seas. There may even be locations where liquid water interacted with these organics during Titan's history inside impact craters and below the surface. If Dragonfly can study this exotic frozen chemistry in action on Titan by sampling organics, it can help reveal how the basic ingredients for life as we know it – amino acids, nucleotides, lipids – may have assembled on early Earth under different conditions long ago. That could finally provide major clues to help explain the cosmic riddle of life's origins. Pretty mind-blowing stuff. Now, back to more details on the Dragonfly mission itself. This super high-tech drone is going to revolutionize how we explore other worlds. Dragonfly's design is key to enabling the groundbreaking science we want to carry out on Titan. At its core, it's a rotorcraft. That means it will fly from place to place, powered by eight spinning rotors. That not only allows it to cover far more territory than a traditional Mars rover, but it also lets Dragonfly scout out optimal places to sample and perform experiments. Flying on Titan is easier in some ways. The thick atmosphere provides more lift and the gravity is lower about one-seventh of Earth's. But the engineering challenges are immense. The atmosphere is bitterly cold, with surface temperatures around negative 290 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 180 degrees Celsius. So components have to function in extreme frigid conditions they were never designed for on Earth. The team has tested various materials and electronics at temperatures colder than Antarctica to make sure there are no unwanted surprises once Dragonfly lands. Since Titan receives about one three thousandths as much sunlight as Earth, there's no chance for solar power. Instead, Dragonfly will get electrical and heating energy from a compact radioisotope thermoelectric generator. Similar to what powers NASA's Curiosity Mars rover, it uses heat released by natural radioactive decay of plutonium. 
Surprisingly, one of the instruments on Dragonfly, called a gamma-ray spectrometer, actually needs the cold. It has to operate at negative 184 degrees Celsius. But normally, achieving temperatures that low requires small mechanical refrigerators. On Titan, you just need to crack open a window. In terms of flying instruments, I mentioned the eight rotor blades already, which are specially designed for Titan's thicker atmosphere and lower speed of sound, almost more like a wind turbine twisted for efficiency than a traditional helicopter blade. There's also a central aft rotor that helps provide stability and control. The engineering team has performed extensive models and simulations to optimize maneuverability and flight power consumption. Now, in order to actually scout out intriguing locations to sample, Dragonfly has plenty of eyes. Five cameras in total. There's one pointing down to help create surface maps. Another looks forward so the rotorcraft can see upcoming terrain, and a pair provide panoramic views for remote science analysis, plus a microscopic imager that can zoom in close on sand grains and pebbles. These cameras will not only help Dragonfly navigate safely, but give all of us back on Earth an awesome alien eye view as this intrepid explorer flies over Saturn's largest moon. The key instrument on board is called the Dragons, the Dragonfly Gamma Ray and Neutron Spectrometer. By shooting neutrons into the ground and measuring the gamma rays that bounce back, it can determine water and organic composition in the soil and ice. Dragons can take quick readings before the lander even touches down at a new site, helping ensure only the most intriguing areas are selected. No more waiting weeks for a slow-rolling rover to arrive before getting the first clues about a location. Other sensors include a seismometer, provided by the Japanese space agency, JAXA. It can detect seismic activity which will help reveal whether Titan indeed has an underground ocean and what the thickness of the crust is. Since sound travels readily through Titan's dense atmosphere, Dragonfly also has a microphone. Not only can NASA analyze acoustic recordings to study wind, dunes, and possible cryovolcanism, imagine how eerie alien noises might sound on this moon over 850 million miles from Earth. To directly analyze organics and complex chemistry dug up from below Titan's surface, Dragonfly has an incredibly sensitive mass spectrometer, which can weigh molecules to help identify their structure. It carries tiny lab ovens and chemical reactors to heat, process, or separate samples. The goal is to answer questions around how far complex organic chemistry has progressed on Titan. Have basic life ingredients, like amino acids, combined into larger compounds, like proteins? Dragonfly also contains a drill to pull up crust samples from below. Without needing a bulky arm and scoop, it's an innovative pneumatic system that sucks up soil to feed to the instruments. Early prototypes showed it can work remarkably fast, compared to, say, the Perseverance rover's meticulous coring process. And getting around the sands, rocks, and icy material on Titan's surface takes a whole set of engineering solutions, too. The skids have specially designed adhesive properties to prevent getting stuck in damp or sticky material. And the landing legs fold up compactly while still ensuring stability and clearance during flight. One last fun fact, Titan's surface is very dark, about 1,000 times dimmer than Earth daylight. So, Dragonfly carries ultraviolet lamps that could stimulate its surroundings into a spooky alien glow. Who knows what hints hidden complex organic chemistry might reveal under the right extraterrestrial lighting conditions. All right, hopefully that gives you a better idea of how Dragonfly can perform some incredibly innovative science across Titan. Thanks to this suite of instruments and its mobility to access the most astrobiologically compelling locations. I think the part that blows my mind the most is that this nuclear powered spacecraft will be able to fly over 70 kilometers per battery charge. That would be like driving from LA to San Diego every single day to do science across totally new terrain. Dragonfly may not look sleek, but don't underestimate this beast. Now that we understand what makes Dragonfly so special, Let's talk about the next major milestones in development. Dragonfly has a long to-do list to get ready for its flight to the Saturn system in 2027. Right now, the major focus is on finalizing the design requirements and prototype testing before the mission enters full-fledged construction this year. Since Dragonfly is a completely novel rotorcraft design, 
validating models and simulations with real-world data is crucial. The team has access to specialized wind tunnel facilities at NASA's Langley Research Center in Virginia to put scale models through their paces. These wind tunnels can replicate the density and viscosity of Titan's nitrogen-rich atmosphere much more accurately than regular testing chambers. Last year, engineers gathered over 700 runs worth of aerodynamic performance data on a model only half the size of Dragonfly. They focused on how the rotors will operate during two key phases, descent and landing, and forward flight over the surface. The atmospheric properties in the tunnel enabled them to achieve flight behavior much closer to what Dragonfly will actually experience, navigating through the skies of Titan. The engineers varied factors like wind speed, rotor RPM, angle of attack, and more to understand how design tweaks could optimize maneuverability and power consumption. It's kind of crazy to think a model drone here on Earth could soon help the real Dragonfly drone fly effortlessly between alien sand dunes 850 million miles away. These extensive wind tunnel tests covered anticipated in-flight conditions and scenarios much more thoroughly than any simulation could. The data is being integrated to further improve the accuracy of the models the team will use to program flight control systems before launch. Speaking of launch, beyond aerodynamic testing, Dragonfly is also verifying capabilities across a wide breadth. Electronics functionality at extreme temperatures, seismic vibration tolerance, which it will undergo during liftoff, and ensuring the complex sampling mechanisms withstand repeated use without any sticking or seizing up in the cold environment. And while all this physical testing is happening, there are always more mission requirements being defined. NASA experts are working closely with the Dragonfly team to detail science objectives. What types of sites offer the best discoveries? How will drill samples be processed and stored? What data is most essential to beam back to Earth? The scientists map out the key questions they want Dragonfly to help answer about Titan, then engineers make sure the instruments and rover capabilities can deliver. With under three years to launch, it's definitely an action-packed schedule for Dragonfly teams across the country. But soon, all these technology demonstrations and final reviews will ensure this unique spacecraft is ready to voyage to Saturn and reveal more secrets of life in our solar system. We still have a few years to wait, but how incredible is it that we are sending a flying robotic laboratory to Saturn's moon? This is the kind of thing I used to only dream about as a kid. Dragonfly really demonstrates how far space technology has come. All right, everyone, that's our epic dive into Dragonfly. Let me know if you have any other questions in the comments, and don't forget to smash those like and subscribe buttons. I can't wait to follow along as Dragonfly gets closer and closer to the Saturn system. Imagine the views it will send back once it starts flying over Titan's alien sand dunes. What a time to be alive. This is your specialist, the space technician, signing off for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you space cowboys in the next one.